It hardly really seems a year since I was standing up doing this last year. Um, and it's been a fantastic year for physics. Um, the, the discovery of the Higgs boson, a resurgence of interest in schools and universities in science, a, a, a very strong showing by physics-based companies in the UK as the economy starts, we hope, to turn around. Um, in about 10 days, we'll launch our Institute of Physics report on physics-based contributions to the economy, which shows the tremendous success we have in translating stuff out of laboratories into commercial applications, the creation of wealth, the creation of employment. It's been a very good year for the Institute of Physics. Um, in terms of, of paid membership, I, I, I learned to try to discriminate these things. <laughs> Mem membership now, now, now numbers well over 45,000. And this is a great tribute to the Institute. This is a huge number of folks that we can mobilize in, in, in support of science in the UK and physics in particular. We've worked very strongly within the IOP on education programs with tremendous support from government where we think we've made a real difference to the recruitment and the, the retention of top quality physics teachers. Um, we've, we've been organizing and running the initial teacher trainer scholarships, which have brought in the most wonderfully talented people into physics teaching. Um, the continued work of the Stimulating Physics Network to support science teachers in the country, and especially physics teachers, who may not be physicists by background, but who are teaching physics within schools, is something that's really important to us. We're doing more and more internationally, both through our Physics for Development projects, and also with members in India and Sub-Saharan Africa. So all in all, it's been a tremendously good year for physics. Um, what we've been trying to do this year is to try to do a few innovations. We have two new categories of award that I think is re are really very important. The Phillips Award recognizes individuals who have given distinguished service to the Institute. Um, and so for the very first time, we're able to recognize physics citizenship within, within our award ceremony. I think that's really important to us. We depend hugely on the enthusiasm and the commitment of members who voluntarily give up their time to the Institute, give their expertise, they run conferences, they set up all sorts of things that we think are enormously important. So we want to be able to recognize that. So we want, we want really to celebrate our own physics heroes and heroines, and that's really what we're doing this evening. Another of our, um, uh, our introductions this year are the Innovation Awards, to celebrate companies in, in the UK and Ireland that have generated some really substantial commercial success from the application of physics. And uh, this afternoon, we've been showcasing the four winners this year, the first year of our Innovation Awards, and we're going to be making those awards to them this evening. Now, more and more people have recognized the, the excitement of physics. It provides answers to the really big questions about the nature of, and the origins of the universe. Um, but it's also important to recognize that the physics community just contribute enormously to the wealth of the country as well. And, and that, that combination of the two is something that we're going to be celebrating today. At a time when economic growth and jobs are national priorities, and, and you will see from the report that we will launch at the House of Commons in about 10 days, that the physics-based sector of the economy has held up really well during the recession and offers the potential for continued growth. You'll see some wonderful examples of small innovative companies that exploit physics research and have really found ways in which they can take their intellectual advances that they, they have uh, developed into genuine commercial success. It's a perfect example of how fundamental curiosity-driven research inspires innovation in the longer term. One of the things we did is we actually sent a film crew along, uh, uh, filmed both the Innovation Award winners and our Gold Medal Award winners. The Gold Awards are the uh, premier awards. Um, and one of the odder things that happened is that when we were doing this filming, the the CTO of Zebedee, who is one of our companies that has won the Innovation Awards, told the film crew how his original research had been stimulated and encouraged by an inspirational supervisor. The crew realized that the story sounded awfully familiar, and they, they'd filmed just that supervisor just the week before, Roy Sambles, who's actually this year's winner of the Faraday Award. Now, you can't do physics without physicists. 
So we've worked really hard to try to work out ways in which we can see young people choosing physics in schools and in universities. And on the face of it, the numbers are looking really quite encouraging. The number of students choosing A-level and higher physics has risen year on year since 2007. Applications for physics degrees are up in a year when overall university applications have actually declined this year. Five universities this year have either started or are planning new degree courses in physics, reversing the trend of many years. But this is only really literally half the story. Physics is now the third most popular A-level subject for boys. It's different for girls. <laughs> Today we released a report on physics and girls. That released, it was released this morning, a lot of press attention. And it showed that nearly half of all co-ed maintained schools in England do not even send one girl to do physics at A-level. Now, should we care? Absolutely. The, the inequity of, of, of denying girls the opportunities they deserve, a time when the nation is crying out for skilled STEM graduates, people with a scientific ability, what we're doing is, is just absurd that a, just a desperately high proportion of the country is being denied the opportunity to participate in, in physics, and therefore in, in engineering as well. The CBI recently stated, recruiting staff with strong, uh, strong STEM skills will help underpin the UK's ability to compete and achieve growth in many major sectors like manufacturing, construction, and engineering. 42% of firms report that they're struggling to find the STEM talent they require. We could increase the number of physics literate employees entering the workplace by about 60% at a single stroke if as many girls as boys choose physics at A-level. So one of the challenges we have as an institute is to address this. If 46% of schools that are state-maintained and are co-ed send no girls on to study physics at A-level, and because quite often where you live determines which school you go to, we have denied the chance to participate in what we know is just truly important to a huge proportion of our population. We must address this. Now, we know that girls' perceptions of physics are formed well, belong, well beyond the physics classroom. You know, we have to work on, on, on getting the right message over at the earliest possible stage. We need to address it with the appropriate way of, of, of influencing teachers, which we will. But a major influence on everyone's perception of physics is, of course, the media. We're lucky to have really many excellent science journalists in the UK. Um, one of the very best is actually here tonight, my former 2T, Palab Ghosh, the BBC science correspondent. And Palab does a great job in representing science to us. <laughs> but we need, we need to encourage even more coverage, you know, from young writers who can inspire the next generation to study physics. And so today, we, together with the STFC, the Science and Technology Facilities Council, we're launching a new prize in physics journalism to celebrate the work of science journalists. STFC has closed links with, with a number of, of, of uh, international physics-based activities, but especially with Japan. And the prize is an expensive paid trip to Japan to visit world-leading facilities that, that carry out research absolutely at the frontiers of science. So if you want to know details of that and to encourage young people to enter the, 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 the uh, STFC-sponsored Physics Journalism Prize, look on the STFC webpage or look on ours. Um, and we hope that many writers will submit entries, whether the journalists now want to become journalists, they're physicists, or maybe both. Now, of course, I can think of very few individuals 
who have had such a major impact on the presentation of physics in the media as the winner of this year's President's Medal. Brian Cox has, with tremendous success, married his career as a particle physicist, working in part on the Atlas experiment, with his work as a popularizer of science. There are many scientists who do excellent work explaining science to general audiences. But very few, if any, can do this with the charisma that Brian brings to this. He communicates the joy and the wonderment of scientific discovery in an incredibly personal way that really means that he engages the listener, the viewer, and makes everyone appreciate the beauty and the power of science. He really is a true role model for young people. His television programs are beautifully made, accessible, and, and yet they really are scientifically rigorous. His radio program, The Infinite Monkey Cage, which takes a light-hearted look at science, it really has a cult following. He writes books, uh, The Quantum Universe one, which I recently uh, took a look at, uh, he co-authored with Jeff Forshaw, is an example of that. The book's informal in style, but serious in intent, and it embodies his style as a popularizer of science. The public's interest in physics has really never been higher, and in particular the interest of young people in physics. And there's no doubt that Brian has played a really important part in this. We're very lucky to have him, and we're delighted to honor him with the President's Award. So for his achievement in promoting science to the general public and inspiring the next generation of physicists, please welcome the winner of the President's Medal of the Institute of Physics, Professor Brian Cox.